Hello and welcome to Introduction to Programming Concepts. I'm your video presenter, Colin Archibald. This is your first course in computer programming. Uh, the best way to learn how to program a computer is to jump right in and write computer programs. This is a supplement to your C programming textbook. So this is going to be a course in C programming, but we're going to focus not on the language C as much as on the concepts. For this program, for this course, we're going to use Microsoft's Visual C++ 2005 Express Edition, and you're going to have to have this installed on your machine. Look for Appendix 1, a video segment like this that will show you how to download and install the development environment that you're going to use so that your machine will look just like mine. I think what you might like to do as you're using this is to first of all pretend that you're in the classroom and I'm your personal instructor for this course and take notes so while I'm talking in front of a, a PowerPoint slide like this take notes as if you were in a, in a classroom and you won't have to go back through all of the presentations when it's time to review and catch up on things that you might have uh, forgotten it, it's also a good idea when I'm demonstrating programming in the Visual Studio that you have your Visual Studio running at the same time and flip back and forth. So when I show you how to do something, flip to the Development Studio and implement it yourself. So this is not a passive exercise where you sit back and watch this as though it were on television. You're going to be doing the programming as I'm doing the programming. So if, you're, if the concepts come off of your fingers, into the development environment, then you have a much better chance of learning this and remembering it, and it makes for a more enjoyable and a more efficient way of learning programming concepts, and in this case, the C programming language. You must mix practice programming with understanding the concepts, and this turns out to be not optional. So I've taught this class to more than 20 groups of students. I already know um, how to do this efficiently. Uh, I know what mistakes you'll make and I'll tell you, uh, even if you don't like it, I'll tell you what mistakes you're going to make before you make them and it, it can help to reduce the frustration that you have uh, when you get stuck in the development environment. I want to point out right from the beginning that solving problems yourself is a very different skill from understanding the solution to a problem. This is related to what we just discussed, that you must be solving problems at the same time that you're learning the concepts. So having the language doesn't mean that you can express something in the language. You have to be thinking in the language and expressing something and try to develop those problem-solving skills at the same time. So that makes this not a passive process. Um, just watching this is the same as just watching videos about running the marathon. You won't be able to run the marathon because you've watched a lot of videos about it you're going to need to practice. This will supplement any C programming textbook or you can think of it as vice versa that the C programming textbook is supplementing this. It doesn't matter to me. So let's jump in. Like I promised, let's write a C program and here's a complete C program that will we will type into the development environment and run. It looks very cryptic right now. We have angle brackets, pound signs, parentheses, braces, double quotes, backslashes. So there's a lot of cryptic symbols that you're going to have to get used to typing and um, once again this is a lot more comfortable if you um, have these come off of your fingers so that when we get to the more interesting one um, you're not struggling with what's a brace and what's a parentheses and so on. So this is the first program that we're going to enter and it doesn't do very much. When we run this program it will print out Hello World onto the console. So our computer programs that we'll write when we run them they will produce output on a console window. These are the concepts that we're going to look at. The syntax um, of the program, 
Um, when you type something wrong, you get those symbols wrong, the braces and the parentheses and so on. This is a syntax error. And we'll look at the program output. That's another concept. Each C program has a function called main. So a C program always starts with a main function. Our programs for a while will only have a main function. So if you don't have Visual C++ Express set up on your machine, go to look at Appendix 1 and get that set up. And we're going to immediately go and enter into the development environment our first C program. Here we are in the development environment and we're going to make our first C program. So we'll start out by saying file new project and you can um, call this project whatever you want. We're going to call ours first project and it's going to be a Win32 console application. You can leave everything else the same except for one thing. When you come to this screen, click on Application Settings, and we're going to choose Empty Project. So we don't want them to put things in there for us that we don't understand and don't need at this point. So a console application and an empty project, and click Finish, and we'll see in the Solution Explorer window that we now have folders for header files, resource files, and source files we're going to make only one source file. So right click on the folder source files and say add new item. And we're going to add a code file. And instead of a C++ file, we're going to make a .c file. So that's kind of important. We want to enter the name of the file and I'm going to call mine hello.c. So the .c extension is quite important here. If you don't include that, the default is CPP, which is a C++ file, and we're going to make a C program, not a C++ program. So now we have a text editing window here, and an output window here where we'll see our compile errors if we make any. So now let's type in the, pro the program, include standard io.h, the angle brackets are the less than and greater than signs, and include standard lib.h. Now we're going to make the main function. It starts with a brace and ends with a brace and now we'll type something in, in the middle. printf inside of double quotes hello world and then backslash n and then we'll do a system pause so that we can see what we've done when the program runs. We don't want it to get away too quickly. It's hard to type and talk at the same time. Okay, so much of this program is cryptic to you and for now, just getting started, we're going to get a program that runs and then we're going to learn the stuff that goes inside of the main. Okay, you see the little asterisk here means that we've changed this since we've saved it. So we can click on the diskette here and save this program. We really didn't need to do that because it would have been done automatically for us when we click on this. This button, which is a, a green triangle pointing to the right, it says start debugging. That will compile our program and run it. So if we haven't made any typing mistakes, it should actually compile this program. We'll see the output down here. And we should see a console window as the program runs with the output Hello World. So this is our program actually running. It doesn't do very much, but it does what we asked it to. It, it outputs Hello World onto the console. And then this, press any key to continue, is the system pause. So I wanted this window to stay here so we could see that it did what we, what we intended it to. So that was really quite simple. There's only five lines here. Well, six if you count the, the close brace. Now, if we had made any mistakes, and chances are the first time you type one of these programs, you will make a mistake. For example, 
if you leave out the semicolon on the end of this line by mistake and then you try to compile and run your program you'll get this message there were build there were build errors and we don't want to continue by running the last one we want to find out what the build errors were so here in the output window you should find one of these lines has an error on it so error missing semicolon if you double click on this line the one that says syntax error it will try to point to where it thinks you've made the mistake so you might notice that this one is pointing at this line of code which does not have a mistake in it but this is the first time that the compiler discovered that there was something wrong so it points at this line and says there was a syntax error and the problem actually was that there was a missing semicolon there well let's try um, to make some other syntax errors and see what the error messages are some of them are quite cryptic and not helpful so if you have a close double quote with no open double quote let's see what would happen in that case we're going to have some fairly cryptic error messages hello is an undeclared identifier well it gives us a hint of what we might have done wrong and it kind of gives us the area that we've done something wrong it doesn't really tell us what we really did wrong we'd like it to say you forgot to put a double quotes in here before the H but it's not that smart so we have to take these error messages for what we can get out of them and um, we, we, as you make syntax errors you'll kind of figure out what the error messages do how they how they can help you and sometimes not help you so there it is then we have a working C program that outputs hello world on a console not a very interesting program but it's a significant place we're going to start working right here in the main function learning about the C language. So in the next segment we'll start typing more interesting things into this program. Um, for now be satisfied that even though we don't understand all of this it has to be there and we'll do some more interesting things in the, in the next segment. Okay let's review the concepts that we went over in typing in a very simple C program that presented hello world onto the screen the console window first of all the syntax syntax is the rules for writing a computer program in a particular language so the syntax rules of C programming include the semicolons being in the right place and the braces and so on um, the syntax errors are caught in the compile in the compiling process so the first process after you've typed in a text file which is a C program the first step in the process of running it is to compile it and the compiler will not allow you to type in things that don't conform to the formal rules of the C language in in our case the C language so syntax errors sometimes called compile time errors because they're reported by the compiler if you have syntax errors in your C program the C program will not run um, you must have all of the syntax errors out before you see um, the program execute the output from the program is information that originates in the program and then is output onto the screen in our case onto the console window or it might be program output that winds up in a file maybe later on we'll write some programs that write data into a file but these are all considered to be output from the program so you must get a simple program to run if you haven't done that while you were watching this you must have a simple program to run at this point that's the purpose of segment one get your development environment set up enter a C program run it on your machine and then we'll be ready to start putting some more interesting things into the main function in the next segment.